Crusader AA added a turret with twin 20mm cannon for air defence in place of the earlier Crusader tank turret. This rejuvenated an older design and gave British troops mobile air defence over the beaches in 1944. Join me for a look inside the box. This is the Crusader AA Troop 15mm plastic box set for British D-Day forces in Flames of War. This is a modification of the Crusader tank chassis to create an air defence weapon for British forces. The A-15 Crusader tank was a cruiser tank design which served mainly in North Africa. The tank was a 1930s design, and while it worked well enough in the desert, after North Africa it was obsolete. It lacked adequate firepower or protection to be useful as a gun tank. Better and more capable designs like the Sherman were becoming readily available in adequate numbers. However, more than 5,000 Crusaders had been built. It was possible to adapt these chassis for different roles. One of these was as an anti-aircraft vehicle, aimed at giving mobile air defence during offensive operations in northwest Europe. The Crusader AA Mark I mounted a single 40mm Bofors gun in an open boxy turret. Some of these conversions even lacked the turret with a Bofors gun and its standard gun shield mounted on the chassis. The Mark II and III mounted a smaller enclosed turret armed with twin 20mm Ehrlichan cannons and a .303 Vickers gun. This was more successful, but provided limited visibility for spotting and tracking approaching aircraft. AA troops of Crusaders were generally attached to British HQ units. As the Allies achieved air superiority over the battlefields, the need for this specialist AA vehicle declined, and many troops were disbanded after the Normandy campaign. Some units, notably the 1st Polish Armoured Division, had some success using these against ground targets. If we look at the back of the box, there's an image of a completed kit and an exploded assembly diagram. The parts count is low at just 12 points, and the assembly looks simple and straightforward. The box set contains two Crusader AA guns and two unit cards. There's also a sprue of British Tank Commander crew figures included that isn't mentioned on the box. There are no decals supplied. Let's look at the plastic. This first sprue is the plastic Crusader tank sprue. This is the same plastic you'll find in mid-war desert tank box sets for Flames of War. I've reviewed this before, so just a quick look here. We're going to be using the hull and suspension parts from this sprue. The turrets, guns and side skirts are not required. Lots of stuff for the bits box. This second sprue is new. It has the parts for the 20mm AA turret and guns. The twin guns are a single piece, which will simplify assembly. I hadn't realised the Ehrlichan barrels were mounted slightly offset. This is correctly represented on this kit. The turret is a tall, angular shape designed to mount the 20mm cannons. While it was well armoured, it afforded poor visibility, a drawback for an AA system. The stowage box on this sprue goes on the front left track guard, the opposite side from the driver's position. Its correct positioning is shown on the assembly diagram. Overall, parts are well cast and the assembly is straightforward. It builds up into a nice looking kit. This sprue of crew is the standard plastic British commander figures. With six figures to choose from, you have plenty of options. These are well moulded. The two unit cards are both for Crusader AA troops. One is a generic British card, while the other is for the Desert Rats. Both of these cards are careful, meaning they're hit on a 4+. The generic Crusader AAs have a confident 4-plus motivation rating, with an SP gun counter-attack rating of 6. These are not assault troops and will most likely break off if assaulted. The Desert Rats Crusader AAs have a reluctant rating, needing a 5-plus to pass a motivation test. They have the same counter-attack rating of 6, but they also get the Cautious Not Stupid rule, giving them a 4-plus remount. This means they're more likely to remount after a bailout than their general reluctant rating would suggest. This will come in handy if you need to remount before a morale test. 
Both cards give a skill rating of trained, needing a 4 plus to pass a skill check. They have an SP gun assault rating of 6. Again, these support troops are not likely to assault well. Front armour is 3, side and rear is 2, and top 0. While this armour rating would make this vehicle obsolete as a tank in late war, it makes for good protection for a support vehicle. Just don't get in close, as even modest late war infantry anti-tank weapons can make holes in this. Tactical move is 12 inches or 30 centimetres. Crusader was always pretty nimble. It also has some good dash speeds, but narrow tracks means the cross is a 3 plus. The only weapon stat line is for the Crusader AA twin 20mm guns. These have a range of 20 inches or 50 centimetres with a halted rate of fire of 4 and moving of 2. Anti tank is 5 with a 5 plus firepower. The only special rule they get is Dedicated AA. Found on page 93 of the version 4 rulebook, Dedicated AA says Dedicated Anti Aircraft Weapons shoot at aircraft using their halted rate of fire. If we look at the D Day British lists, you can't take Crusader AA as a support or formation support option. They're only available as an optional unit within British Armoured Squadrons. Two Crusader AA vehicles is three points. They are only available as a two vehicle unit. This limits how many you can take given there's only one of these troops per squadron. So why would you take Crusader AA over the Bofors Light AA option? Crusader AA is more expensive than Bofors, and you can get more Bofors guns in a troop with three for four points and six for eight. Bofors also has better reach with a 24 inch or 60 centimetre range over Crusader's 20 inch or 50 centimetres. In direct fire, Bofors has a higher AT, a 7 versus the Crusader's 5, with the 40mm gun also getting a 4 plus firepower. Bofors guns are also veterans with a 3 plus skill. Even their assault rating is better. I'm also concerned about only getting two Crusader AA vehicles in a troop. Two vehicle units are notoriously fragile under the current morale rules. However, Crusader is mobile, able to keep up with armoured formations on the move. These might be a good option for aggressive manoeuvring players who need to keep enemy aircraft off their forward formations. It's also an armoured team so it can't be pinned, unlike the Bofors gun team. So generally the Bofors is more effective, but the main advantage of the Crusader is its mobility. If you need AA protection that can move to keep an AA umbrella over your advancing units, it might be the option you need. So that's the Crusader AA troop box set for Flames of War. It's nice to have this in plastic. The only really new plastic here is the 20mm AA turret and guns. This builds up into a great looking kit. Detail is fine, well modelled and moulded, up to Battlefront's usual standard. Parts count is low, so you should be able to build these up for the table quickly. I wasn't expecting these to be released in plastic, so when they were released I had to buy some. I'll also get some plastic Bofors guns when I can find some in stock somewhere. I suspect they might actually be more useful. Have you used the new plastic Crusader AA for your forces? How did they perform? Let us know in the comments. If you've been enjoying Fog of War videos, don't forget to subscribe.